Today in this video, we want to talk about uh, setting up an apiary just in your local environment. Now, when you look around your local environment and you want to set an apiary, look around the available space and how many hives you can set in, how uh, the types you want, and maybe the, considering the environment around. You may have schools, you may have roads, you may have a well, all those factors. Also distance from home. Now, the apiary you are looking at, this environment is a forest environment. Some people have uh, a, a tree area, like they have a small forest, like you can see here, it is eucalyptus. Now, this was the available area to set up this apiary. We are having eucalyptus and then the hives are under. The importance is we want to maximally use this land. And the, you look around, you, you see we have trees on top, they are giving us shade. You know bees want shade because uh, when the temperatures are high, the bees will not work very well. And when it is too low still, they will not work well. So they need moderate environment like this one. That's why I talked about the environment. Then we also want to use the, the forages up, the flowers. We know eucalyptus gives nectar and pollen. Now, those are what we considered. Then in the environment still, we are considering factors that we are going to modify. True, we have eucalyptus, it's giving us shade, nectar, and we're using a site which has a, a plantation of eucalyptus. But we are modifying, you're seeing the fence around. In case any animal or human beings come, they will not cross direct to the apiary because these bees are, African bees are aggressive. Then you look around, we are having a door uh, on entering the apiary. The place should not be left open for any intruder to come in. You look around again, we have forages, you know. Much as we have eucalyptus, but we need also forages. This is angel's trumpet to increase on the foraging ability of the bees. There are more forages. We have, uh, we have bottle brush, which is here growing, so that the area is very well matching with our bees. Then other factors to modify, the stands, the hive stands. Here we have used the concrete blocks and then we have uh, a table stand. We have timber running. The timber should run like this and then the hive sits like the way you're seeing. Then the, the blocks should be firm and concrete. They help the, the beehive not to shake a lot or not to fall down. So you can see we use the table stands which are running long like this and they are carrying our hives. This side we have the Kenya top bar hive and then we have on the right we have the, the Langstroth bee hives. So they are spaced at three meters because this is the area available and we need it to, to carry the capacity of the bee hives that we had in plan at the initial startup of the apiary. So we had to set them at a distance of 3 meters and then a stand runs in the distance of about 20 meters. And when you look around, the stand is carrying so many hives. So in this small area, the available space, we have managed to set so many beehives, like you can see. And that is looking at the area available and trying to set up the apiary, trying to modify some other environmental factors. In the forest still, we have so many trees. We imagine they create a good environment and also they give us nectar, pollen, plus propolis from different flowers in the forest. Here, we are standing at the entrance of the apiary. It is a forest apiary. We know there are animals that can come in. There are other trespassers like human beings that can come in. So, we have a gate when you come. You open and enter. So this one shows that you are strictly not allowed to enter in the apiary because bees are hostile. You see, we have wires that are stopping you. You cannot easily enter into this apiary because there is a door and a padlock is always fixed to ensure safety. 
But not only the gate, there is always a fencing. Here we use the barbed wire, although we have the live fencing also, and we are using our forage plants now. This uh, fencing all around, like perimeter, helps to stop animals like goats, like cows, even other big animals that may want to cross. At least they find it hard to cross and disrupt the bees. And once the bees are disrupted, they will sting and they will be uh, disturbed a lot. So that's why we have the fence around to stop the trespassers. Even if it was uh, an area where people are using like collecting firewood, they will meet the fence. And also the slashing around shows you that it is visible, there is an apiary. The barbed wire fence will require you to do a lot of maintenance timely because the poles get loose, you can see, the, the tension of the wire, but also gaps are so many now. It becomes so hectic in doing a lot of maintenance on the fence. It is very advisable for beekeepers to use live fences and also important to use live fences that are providing either shade or forages uh, to, to the plant. Like here, we are including a live fence in the in, in the barbed wire fence. This is angel's trumpet. At the same time, it will give us nectar and pollen. But you see, it is reducing the space, you know, for any trespasser to pass. And now, there is little maintenance. But if it is only poles, barbed wire, you require a lot of labor to do maintenance of the fence. Yes, this is a forest apiary, but not every beekeeper has access to the forest. Now, if you don't have access to the forest like this and you're thinking to start an apiary, you'll have to select your site and then modify it. You can have a bee shed in that area, a temporary shed, and then have hives sited in that shed, a, a temporary structure. You can have uh, hive stands also, but each hive stand has got a shed on specific hives. Then also, you can plant fast growing trees like Caliandra. With the time, they will find you. You don't need to wait for the forest or to wait for the trees to grow, but you need an apiary. So you have to modify the site accordingly, looking at the area available. Here, we are talking about colonization of beehives by spreading them uh, in the forest. When you spread beehives in the forest, you increase the rates of colonization. Because when you set hives in one place, a swarm can pass 20 meters away, 30 meters away, 200 meters away, and you will not catch that swarm. But when you spread them along the farm, or along the forest like this hive, you increase chances of colonization. Now, how is it done? With the colonization, by spreading hives around the, the forest, you first clean the hive, the hive body, then clean the entrances, make sure that at least a queen bee, the size of the pencil, the queen bee can pass. So you smoothen the entrance holes, then you bait it now. When you bring it on the site for sighting to, to trap a swarm of bees, you have to come with a ladder, you put it here. Now, you carry the hive. Normally, two people are better than one in this activity. So you carry the hive, you suspend it up. Now, as you suspend, make sure the top bars are in good position. Because if they are in a bad position, the hive will colonize and then they start putting cross combs. Now, as you suspend, here we have used the Kenya top bar hive and we have wires but some other people will use ropes. Now, you set this hive, make sure you monitor it. You monitor it on insects that may colonize the hive before a swarm enters. You also come and check whether it is uh, on a steady branch, which cannot easily break. Make sure the wires are firm and they cannot easily break. So those are the monitoring precautions. Now, when the chance gives you and it colonizes, you give it about two to three weeks. It will have constructed about four top bars or five. There you're free 
to remove it. Now, removing it, you come with a pulley system. You come with a ladder, remove it very well from there. You don't need to carry it on your head. Tie the rope on the two straps, the wires or the rope tying it. Remove it from the branch, then roll it down. You roll it down on a long rope, then it sits on ground. Then you're free to transfer it into the main apiary where you have stands. Now, this method is one of the methods of colonizing beehives. Normally in the forest, there are many bee populations, you know. The tree trunks, the hollow trees and in the ground, they are bee colonies. So these bee colonies, when they are looking for a nest, the scout bees will identify the smell of this baited hive and they come and colonize. Normally forests have, uh, like in nature, they, they harbor very many wild bee colonies. So you trap some of them as swarms and take them to your apiary.